Hey crew. All right. So in today's tutorial, I've gotten a lot of wonderful emails, a lot of wonderful texts, and uh, I'm glad that you guys are enjoying the bright colors that I'm experimenting with and doing some of my paintings. So we're going to do one on canvas, but this is not your ordinary type of canvas. This is a 14 by 18, so it's a little bit bigger than the poster board that we're using. You can get this canvas at my website. And we're going to give it a try today. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. This is the regular size of a poster board that we usually use. And this is a, let me show you, 11 by 14. Let me show you the difference in size. Look at that. Quite a little bit of a difference, huh? It's a few inches. 11 by 14. Put this aside. 14 by 18. As you can see, look at that. Nice and solid. And it'll give you the texture of canvas as well. Pretty neat. All right, let's take that away. Remember to always uh, use your mask, guys. Always have your mask ready before beginning to do any kind of spray paint. Use the one with the filters. Look at the difference. Uh, look how dirty it's gotten just after a few uses. If you have some windows, open them up. Get them nice, get the room nice and ventilated. Okay, this is just little spray paint dust. Clear that out. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to start off with a little bit of pink. It seems like you guys have really been enjoying these colors. And, well, hell, to be honest with you, so have I. Remember, before every use, did you see that? Notice how much it took for it to start spray painting blue. So it took about a second to two seconds. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, and then the colors started coming out. So you gotta make sure you you shake and pre-spray your cans before every use. Before every use, no excuses. Here we go, you know what? I'm gonna add a little bit of purple. Uh, guys, again, this is the Spray Castle brand of spray paint. I ordered 25 batches and small spray cans, as you can tell. I'm completely out. Thank you, guys. I still get a lot of wonderful emails asking where you can get them. And, well, I have to order. Oh, no. I have to order some more. Okay, well, I am completely out of purple. So, let me throw that back there. We'll go with blue. We'll replace the purple that I was going to use with some blue. Now, look at that texture. I love that. If you guys can't see it well enough, I'll zoom it up. It's got that that texture that you see on canvas. This is perfect for spray painting because as you can see, it's very solid. It's not flimsy. Just add a little bit of blue here in the background. Awesome. Okay, now I'm going to line it up with some pink. Now, when you add this pink, it is going to convert the blue that you have underneath. It's going to mix it with it, and it's going to turn it into a purple. You see that? What am I doing here? Well, you see that little edge on the side? I'm just going to go ahead and color that color that in so that you don't see the negative space, which you guys remember what the negative space is? It is this, the white part that has been left without painting. Look at this. Pretty cool, huh? Now notice how the pink will uh, will be a little bit clearer to see on the negative space because you don't have the blue mixing underneath it, so it won't look as as dark. It'll look pink. It'll look pink. All right, so I'm just gonna add a little bit there. Maybe 
we can add a little bit of a burst. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. All right. So I'm going to use our orange. Ooh, I'm running low. I'm running low. I'm going to have to order some more. So it already looks like a sunset. Do you see that? Now, I don't want the orange to be completely overpowering, right? So I don't have the can too close. I'm doing quick sprays, and I'm a good foot away from, from the canvas. I am going to let some of this orange land on our negative space so that it has that nice little orange glow to it. See that? And it shows up more here than it does up there. Now, I'm going to use a little bit more pink to blend the outer edges just right here into our orange. Good. All right, now use some yellow. Remember, shake and use. Now, also, I'm going to be a good foot away. Now, yellow is very overpowering, as you can tell. Just a little bit will stand out. So I'm just going to do quick little bursts. Quick little bursts. Now, notice how it lined up the entire painting. That's good. I'm going to use a little bit more pink. And just soften that yellow a little bit. I'm going to add some orange on top of that, too. I know. This is uh, advanced layer manipulation, guys. But you can still see the orange, I mean the yellow. Just a little bit here. It can be a little hard to, to get just the right scheme that I'm looking for. Because I want that orange to show up. Not, there we go, it's starting to show up. See that? So I lined up my painting with the yellow. And with a little bit of orange, it's bringing it back up. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Now, I want to darken this top part a little bit more. So I'm going to add some blue. And then I'm going to soften it up once again with a little bit of pink. I know we're using quite a few different layers here, but it's also giving us a nice transitional phase from the dark blue to a not so dark blue, to some orange, and eventually to some yellow here on the bottom. It gives it a very, uh, an effect that you see on, on an ocean perhaps. Now remember, if I get closer, my pink will stand out more. So this is how I'm going to create my clouds here in the background. See that? I'm getting closer to the painting. Look at that. Awesome. Cool. All right. All right, now let's work on the ocean. So, yes, it's going to be an ocean scenery. So we have our sky. We have a nice little transitional of purple, pink, orange, and then some yellow. And then we kind of blended that together really nice. I'm going to use a little bit of clear coat. I'm just going to spray that on our painting. Keep it nice and moist. My wife hates that word. So, of course, I have to say it more, you know? <laughs> All right, I'm going to use a magazine sheet. Or, you know what, guys? You can use a magazine sheet. Now, I'll, I'll do it with the magazine sheet, but I also want to show you guys this tool. Very, very handy. You don't know what this is? Go to my website, get it there. It is a soft tip spray castle tool. All right, so I'm going to use a little bit of magazine sheet. 
Okay, just like that. I'm going to combine blue on top of some of that orange that we had laid before us with maybe a little bit of black. It has to be darker because this is going to be some terrain that's off in the distance. And then we're going to bring it home and we're going to make some some uh, palm trees. I know some of you guys have gotten a lot of uh, wonderful emails asking about palm trees. So we'll get to that. First, we have to create our terrain. So I'm just dabbing. Notice, dabbing, tap. And then you start combining some of these colors with the ones below it. I'll add some more here. Pretty easy, huh? Okay. That's how you do it with the magazine sheet. It works, but personally, guys, I love this little tool. Very handy and nifty to use. It holds a little bit more paint than magazine sheets because of the rubber. Okay. I'm just going to add maybe a little bit here in the distance. Now, I want this land not to be completely flat. This is a mistake that I see a lot of beginners do where they just get a straight edge. And I, I mean, I've showed that technique, but once you're doing something a little bit more advanced, you want to break up the land so it's not so straight, right? You want to offset it. So notice how I'm offsetting this piece of land. Just like that. Easy, right? You guys can do this. Yeah. A little bit more here. Now, I'm not concentrating too much on the detail because we're going to make some palm trees. And I want my palm trees to be nice and big, have lots of, uh, what are they called? Palms? Palm leaves? <laughs> Just plain. Uh, I'm not sure what they're called, guys. But we're going to add a little bit of clear coat here on the bottom. Now, with the rag, or uh, I use. Uh, I use rolls of paper like this, paper towels, that come in very handy. Now, I don't like to clean the tool on top of the, the painting, so you come over here and you do it off on the side, guys, because if there's a little bit of dry paint or something, it'll land right on your painting, and you don't do that. You don't want that. I, <laughs> I'm happy I do a lot of video editing, otherwise you guys would hear me cussing all the time if I, if, if I, uh, if I continue to do that. So... We're just going to come over here. Now, what I'm doing here is I am mixing some of the colors that we just now added, which is some of these dark blues, with the colors that are placed underneath for our background, which is the oranges. Now, I did this on purpose because I want this to resemble like it's reflecting the colors above. It's water, so it's very reflective. I'm going to add a little bit of clear coat now. Make sure your fingers are clean. I say that, and look at my finger. Well... It's going to blend this water here on the bottom part. Back and forth, back and forth. Now, you don't want to step halfway through your painting and then continue because then you'll leave your fingerprint. Try and go as smoothly as possible all the way to the end. All the way to the end, guys. Now, it can be a little tough sometimes, but try and continue going all the way to the end. And if it starts to get really sticky and your fingers start staying, just add a little bit more clear on top of that. Now, notice what we've created with just a few layers. Uh, we added the sky. <clears throat> we added a little bit of terrain here on the bottom. Now we're going to go ahead and start adding our, our plant life, our palm trees. Now, for that, I made different sizes for the funnel. So I call this the mama funnel and the baby funnels. So we'll use the baby funnel. For the furthest trees, I think I'm going to use something like this. Notice the difference in the opening. See, I can make some really nice, big, thick branches with this. With this one, it's a little bit smaller. And by a little bit, I mean, look, it fits inside of it. So it's quite a bit smaller. I'm able to create finer, finer palm trees in the background. So that's what we're going to do. Just going to add a little bit of black. Not a whole lot. Now, before I start doing this, before I start putting this on my painting, I'm going to test out right here on the side how much paint is going to come out. Good. 
And so I'm thinking I'm just going to do something like that. Maybe one like this. Uh, maybe maybe a smaller one back here in the background. And I do want to make a big one. Okay. So for the big one, dum -da -dum, we'll use this. We'll use the big funnel. It's a good four seconds worth. One, one thousand, two, one, two, three, one, four, one thousand. And then you put that up. It's uh, that's what I'm starting to balance the measurement. Now, given every can has different amounts of pressure on it, so you may not get the same amount of paint I'm getting, depending on your brand as well. But it's a good way to kind of measure up how much paint I'm using. So, four seconds worth of black. Yeah, I'm just gonna add. Now, this one I want it to be really thick, so I'm not really gonna test it out to see how much. Look at that. And I might just add a little bit more. Make this bark thicker. And what I'm gonna add more paint to it. I want this I want this one to be really, really thick. Now I wanna thank you guys for all the wonderful emails and comments that I've gotten. Very encouraging words. Guys, uh, I do have a lot, a lot of different tutorials. I work with paper companies to get you the right kind of poster board that I use. Uh, they actually manufacture it for me. I get a company that manufactures my, uh, uh, my spray castle pad, which is basically a pad for spray painters, right? So let's see, we have one there. We can create maybe one. Yeah, maybe we can create another one over here somewhere, maybe some leaves coming up. You know, you guys have gone to a store and you see sketching pads and artist pads and stuff like that. Well, this is just for the spray painting. I've done a couple of tutorials where I use it. Oh, I'm going to add a little bit more black here. Just going to stop it right here. Now, here on this bottom part, when did that happen? Now, remember, guys, one thing I also say, everything in spray paint is correctable. So I'm going to take that blot there and I'm just going to turn it into a little piece of terrain. Yeah, see? Easy. Easy, easy, easy. I'm going to use a little bit of black here on this side. I'm going to tap into this. Now, notice how I create my terrain. Tap, 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 tap. It's all about tapping and smearing, right? And the more I smear, the more highlights I create. This looks like a nice little rock here. Now notice I have all these all these dots here. Ah, yeah, I really don't like a. I don't want to show those, so I'm gonna cover them up. I'm gonna make maybe a a rock right here. And maybe on this side, I'm gonna add another rock. It's those little mistakes that make the painting come to life. People are like, did you know you were going to make that? No, I always tell them. I always tell them that the paintings paint themselves. And I know it sounds ridiculous. But like in this instance, well, I had to create something to cover those up. Those little, little mistakes or errors that we had there. Now, to create the trees or the actual palms, we can use two different tools. And I'll show you both of them. Uh, I recommend you don't use the foam brushes to create pine trees. However, when creating palm trees, they work great. You can also use the, the sea sponge. So we'll use both techniques. We'll use both brushes and show you the difference. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our black, once again, right here. This is a silhouette uh, technique. Silhouette meaning there's not a whole lot of color. It's just black. It creates thus a silhouette. I'm going to use the tip of it. Notice how I put my hand here. I don't want no more drops coming down. We've already had enough of those. So I'm just going to create a very palm-like strokes. Know, and there's different types of palms. In case you guys didn't know this, my dad, he's uh, not kidding. He's a tree expert. And so he's the one that used to give me a lot of grief with my, with my palm trees. Hey, 
This is not a kind of palm tree that looks like that. Or just any kind of tree, for that matter. Ah, the old man. It's funny. All right, so look at that. Very easy, just quick strokes. This is great for that. When creating uh, pine trees, guys, I don't recommend it because it makes a very flat pattern. Look, they start going like this, and your trees look like choppy square. Don't do it. Palm trees is okay. Grass is okay. Heck, even creating some hair strands is okay. Yep, you heard me right. You can create hair. You can create people's faces. I'll show you that in more advanced tutorials. I've done, uh, I actually get hired quite a bit to do uh, paintings of pets, which love pets. I mean, I have quite a few. I have one with me now, but back when I was in Carlsbad, I had a couple little army of chihuahuas. And so I'm just going to come over here and just add. And one thing you will also notice is that the sea, I mean the sea sponge, the foam brush will absorb a lot, if not most of the paint that you're putting down. So notice how I have to keep coming back to it. And that's because it's absorbing. For the same reason, you guys don't want to use um, matted paper because it'll absorb your paint. And it may be already tough as it is if you're using the, the foam brush. Okay, one here. We're going to add some of these coming down because it has that. Uh, if you guys have noticed. Uh, okay. Very easy to make, right? Stab a corner. Tap, tap, tap. I've had some people come in ask me, well, can you use a, a brush? Yeah, you can definitely use a brush. I try not to. Not because I have anything against brushes. I mean, I've been an artist for uh, my whole life, so I've used brushes, believe me. It's just the, one of the things I like about spray painting is uh, that we don't use brushes. We just use everyday household items, and brushes can get a little expensive. Besides, after a couple of uses, you'll notice that they get, they get ruined. Unless you use clear coat or paint thinner and keep them in there and wash them regularly. Bit of the pain in the butt, though. Strokes. Okay, now I'm gonna add. Look at this. I'm gonna add some more plant life here. I'm gonna give the illusion that we are right in the middle of the tropics. This is probably. The toughest part of this painting, I think, because I've always told you guys that you guys don't have to know how to draw to be able to create, you know, some pretty amazing works of art. I've always said, no, yeah, it helps, but you really don't, like, need it, need it. Well, here with the palm trees, you have to know at least a little bit of how to make the palm trees look, right? And it's not hard, but you are going to have to practice it. Now notice, notice how much black we're using. We are going through it. Here's how you can create some grass strands using the foam brush. I'm just going to create just a few of those strands. Now, why I don't like using this because it's this is broad. So sometimes I just want a little piece. When you want that, you use the sea sponge. You just tear off a piece of it, come inside, and you start creating some of your some of your grass strands, more detailed grass strands. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, I'm gonna use a little more black. Notice how much black we're using. That's because it is all being absorbed by the brush. A little more plant life right here. 
perhaps we can create a little bit down here. Love the tropics, man. I wish I was there right now. Uh, I live in Colorado, and let me tell you, man, the weather here is crazy. It's been getting a lot of snow. We get to see the entire seasons of all, all year round in one week. Yeah, I'm not kidding, man. We'll get to see sunshine, nice and wonderful. Next thing you know, it's snowing. Then it's raining. Then it's windy. <laughs> Beautiful place, though. I gotta tell you. It is. Man, painting stuff like this. <laughs> I'm sure I am missing it. Okay, hold on. One more back here, and we're just gonna create some. Little strands of grass here on the bottom. That's what I'm doing. Quick little strokes back and forth. Oh, I think this brush is over with. Sometimes what happens when it gets too saturated, it becomes a little too hard to control. I mean, look, I'm touching my finger. And look how much paint's coming out. Hardly anything. It gets too soft. So I'll have to use a little more paint. And I go back and forth. So it's good, but you just, you don't get a whole lot of use with it. At least that's, that's what I've noticed. Is you really good with it? Oh, like anything, right? If you practice with it, then you might learn a couple techniques that I, I quite haven't yet. But I doubt. Well, let's see, let's add maybe one more here, just to give it that feel that there is a lot going on here. Look at that. Pretty cool. All right, well, I'm going to add some white here on the side. I'm going to add a little bit of clear coat when I find it. Here it is. You guys remember what I did here on the bottom? Thus, I just used clear coat to combine these colors. Well, we're going to do the same thing. This time we have a rock in the way, though. Okay, clean the tool nice and clean. Yeah, yeah come over here and start mixing some of these colors together. I was going to touch into some white there if you guys saw me do that, but I'm not. I still want to be able to combine some of the colors that we have here. Okay. Everything is fixable. So don't worry if you get a little bit of those colors onto the rock. We still got to add our highlights. So I'm keeping that in mind. Okay. And a little more. And this is just to kind of mix those colors underneath and give us a ripple effect. Doesn't have to be too realistic. It just has to give us a ripple effect. That's all I'm looking for at the moment. All right, crew. So I didn't realize that there was actually some issues with the camera and it stopped recording. I'm having some issues with it. So I'm sorry about that. I'll look more into it. I also noticed that the camera was cutting off part of the, uh, the painting down here. So I'm going to retrace back to some of the steps that we did that, you know, the camera didn't record. So let's do that. First, we created our background. We added the, the silhouette layer of some trees, created some terrain, and then started working and bringing the painting back home. Okay, once that was done, there was a little bit of space down here where it was nothing more than just pink color. And so what we did is we added some clear coat to this part down here, to this part, and then uh, with the soft tip tool, we managed to wet the colors just enough and smear them together to give us the effect of water. Now, as I mentioned, they don't have to be too realistic. It just has to be uh, blurry. You have to be able to see the, the colors mixing together and blending together so that it gives us the effect of water ripples. Now, what is that I mean by it doesn't have to be too realistic? Well, I've noticed that there's a lot of spray painters out there that will take uh, quite a bit of time. And there's nothing wrong with taking your time with spray painting but they'll take quite a bit of time sitting there and trying to get the perfect waves. That's, that's great when it's really close to you like it is here in this case. But in this tutorial, sometimes easier is a little better, right? Sometimes we tend to overcomplicate things. 
So we just went back and forth, kind of created the waves around this rock. Added a little bit of white, just to kind of give the effect of a uh, little bit of a splashing, the water waves right behind the rock. Uh, we then concentrated on the sun. How was the sun created? I know you guys didn't get to see that part. White. I used a little bit of spray paint. Went right here about that much and just sprayed once. It can be a little tricky, guys. So I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll experiment right here. I'll show you how I did that. I got really close and just went one spray. See that? That's how I created that sun. Now, I made sure I did it right where the sun connected with the water right here on the, on the bottom part. Then what I did, handy dandy soft tip tool came in here and kind of smeared that downwards. Gave us the effect, little water reflection, uh, sunlight reflection on the water. And at the same time, it cut that sun right in half. Maybe not half, but pretty close. Look at that right there. See that? That was done with the tool, just smearing it together. So make sure you get the spray where it connects right with the water line so that you're able to go over here and blend it all together. We added a little bit more foliage. Now you guys remember how I did that? You get your handy dandy uh, sponge brush, added on some black. Came in here, added a little bit more on the background. Uh, just darkened up a couple few areas here. And perhaps here. With the black, you guys remember how to do the dream technique? It's a technique that I use quite a bit on some of my paintings. Not all of my paintings. But in this case, I went ahead and I used it. And that's where I just sprayed a little bit of black on the edges. Right on the edges. Just like that. Here and here. Went all the way around there. I didn't get any of the black on the top because I want that to show how the light is coming out and going outwards. Now these areas are darker because there's a lot of plant life here closer to us. Uh, so then I added a little bit of color here on, the, on our side sheets. It was a little bit of pink. And I just added a few little highlights using the water tinting technique. You guys remember the water tinting technique? That's when you create your water and then you add a splash of color on top of it and just kind of blend it together. It gives, gives the ripples a very realistic effect. So in today's tutorial, guys, we talked about how to create this, this piece of work in just a few minutes using nothing more than the soft tips spray castle tool, which you can get on my website. Uh, you can get this spray painting pad which works great. It's nice and solid. Guys, this is the stuff I love to use in competitions, in more professional presentations, when I give these perhaps as a gift. Uh, it's okay if you give a gift in the form of the stock board, or the stock board, the poster board, which would be this right here. See that? Now look at the difference in size as well. Here, I'll flip it so that you guys can see the, the contrast. See that? There's quite a bit of difference. Uh, this is nice to do whenever you're spray painting live. This is good for uh, practicing. Uh, this is great. Don't get me wrong. I love it. Uh, this is definitely a gift I would love to frame sometime. Uh, perhaps give it to my wife. <laughs> you know, she's got so many things going on. Uh, she's my biggest fan. I'm very lucky. Uh, so anyways, that or you can create something like this very nice sturdy and it has the, uh, the texture of canvas which is what a lot of people like plus if you're going to do this in a competition if you're going to compete with the known medias what is the known medias uh it is oils acrylics watercolor uh multimedia it is uh india ink it's anything else but spray paint spray paint is the new contender is the new uh is the new guy on the block so whenever you're going to compete with something like that, you might want to use something and invest the money on something a little bit sturdier, more professional looking. And not only that, guys, uh, it's cheaper than canvas. And you can, when you frame it, it looks really nice because it gets that texture. And I know that the camera doesn't capture that. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's tutorial. Guys, I am sorry for the little mishaps that I had with the camera. I really apologize for that. Uh, I will take care of it. So crew, until next time, keep those cans shaking, wear your masks, uh, hit me up on Facebook. Uh, I do have an Instagram as well. Look me up, ask me whatever you guys want to ask me. Until next time crew, keep those cans shaking.